Welcome back, Stas23 here, back again with some knife therapy, and today I have another one from Jack Wolf Knives. If you haven't seen, my first one was on this Sharpshooter Jack, outstanding uh, slip joint, and these sold out pretty darn quick, so you definitely want to pay attention to the drop on these. The one I have for you today is his uh, Laid Back Jack and this particular variation is the natural micarta you can also get it in green canvas micarta black canvas micarta or green jungle wear fat carbon scales these come in at 275 for the micarta versions and 300 for the carbon fiber the drop will be this friday the 13th oh no 2022 at 11 a.m pacific time like i said if you're interested in one of these definitely don't hesitate because they will sell out let's get some specs out of the way you have an overall length of six and a half inches you have a blade length of 2.83 inches a handle uh, length of 3.66 inches a thickness in the scales of a pretty thin 0.45 inches, blade stock thickness of 0.12 inches, and the behind the edge thickness on my particular knife ranges from around 14 thousandths all the way up here at the tip, and then it kind of thickens up a little bit toward the back around 18 thousandths. All right, let's take a closer look at this beautiful Warncliffe blade shape. You have a nice belt satin on the primary and the swedge, and I don't know if it's going to show up, but you have a stone wash finish on the flat right here. Nice crescent shaped nail nick that's easily accessible. You have a nice sharpening notch right here that will give you some life uh, to sharpen it up before it starts to widen up in the back over here. Love seeing that. You have a nice deep hollow grind on here making this this blade very very slicey and the blade steel on this is bowler m390 steel which is a high wear resistance and corrosion resistant steel perfect platform for a slip joint in my opinion so you should get a lot of performance out of the edge and uh, that edge should hold up for quite some time why don't we test out this edge and see how well it performs I like to start out with the cardboard cutting because it's very abrasive material. So you're gonna put some, some quick uh, wear onto that edge and see how it's gonna hold up. And uh, here with this Warncliffe blade, it's gonna really excel in this type of cutting because you can get maximum power all the way to that tip. Unlike something with belly where the blade starts to curve and the natural motion of your hand starts to draw that edge away from the material, making uh, the cuts a lot less powerful. Another benefit that I'm gonna show you now is the ability to make really precise cuts, making pull cuts a breeze because of this really acute point. That said, you definitely need to be careful with any heavy side-to-side -side forces on that tip because you may snap it. Then we move on to the pine 2x4 and this is where I like to test how well that edge is still biting. You can see right away it's able to make fine curls into that wood and that, that'll let you know that that edge is still nice and crisp. I am also testing out the ergos because when you start to put a lot of force into that wood you will feel any hot spots that may be around the corner and i'm very happy to say that there was absolutely no hot spots in that handle it's nice and contoured and comfortable however i will say with the prolonged cutting toward the end you can kind of see me adjusting my hand it's only because my my wrist and my forearms are starting to fatigue I was just showing that whenever you start putting pressure in that blade geometry is so nice you can really bite in deep. Now on to the half inch twisted sisal rope. This is where you're going to find one disadvantage with that straight edge and that is the cutting board. So I use a small block of basswood to cut the rope on so I can have more of the cutting edge, use more of the cutting edge and I'm not jamming that tip into the bamboo cutting board underneath and possibly snap that tip. This was probably one of the easiest uh, rope cutting that I've ever done. I made 40 cuts and I only stopped at 40 just so I made sure I had more edge left for the rest of the testing. 
the majority of these cuts as you can see are push cuts and it's just like popping the the rope off now we move on to the final uh, portion of my testing just a bunch of random things this thick leather can be difficult because it's uh, saddle leather and it's not the easiest to cut unless you have a nice sharp edge this edge it remains sharp all the way to the end I, I show you at the end uh, I, I cut a piece of phone book paper and it's still cutting it nice and cleanly now I did have to raise up some of the materials onto the block just so I could get you know enough of that edge and not have to worry about smashing that tip into that bamboo I'm trying to be mindful uh, anytime I cut something I'm not trying to destroy my knife and here you'll see right here I come in contact with the board a little bit so the next cut I decide to put it up on that block just to make it a little bit easier but it's just breezing through all this material uh, it, it was kind of surprising and during the denim it, it looks like it's kind of struggling a little bit but it's not it's that stretchy denim and it some of the denim is passing over the sides of that block just making it a little bit more difficult to slice but that edge is still nice and crisp nice and sharp um, definitely a deep, good heat treat on this M390 as far as I can tell here we go we're gonna test that edge out nice and crisp good working edge still left on that knife well, I hope y'all enjoyed the cutting. Uh, I think the knife performed outstanding. I kind of expected it would. So let's take a look at, I'm going to call it the action because I'm not really a slip joint guy. Very nice and crisp. I guess you walk and talk. Very nice, uh, crisp half stop right there. Flush on the spring in all positions. You get a nice positive close there. The pull's perfect in my opinion. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how to rate them, so I won't. But uh, easy enough to pull it, not super easy to where it feels like you got a uh, you know flimsy spring or weak spring, but just right. And then nice and solid pull, a little bit harder to get it all the way open. I think that's a nice thing. Nice and flush in that open position, as you can see there. Uh, just very crisp, just like on that sharpshooter. Love it. Then we can look at, you have a titanium bolster right here nice millwork in there i love the dark blasted finish it really contrasts very nicely with the micarta sorry about that i think that may have been me with some blood <laughs> sorry uh so just don't worry about that you have the nice and natural canvas micarta with some nice texture to it giving you very nice grip everything is nice and contoured and uh your transition from your bolster to your covers absolutely seamless I cannot tell where one starts and where the other one stops uh, your hardware is polished titanium hardware very nice and crisp hardware you have a Torx T10 pivot and a Torx T8 on the cover uh, screws very very nice uh, everything is made it up perfectly you don't have any gaps in the uh, back spring you have a nice brushed finish on that uh, back spring that stainless steel back spring and everything is nice and flush you don't have any high spots very very nice craftsmanship here these knives are definitely like heirloom quality something you can pass it down to your kids and if you treat them right and you um oil them up <clears throat> sorry and maintain them they should last you a lifetime your blade centering is perfectly centered uh, in the open position you don't have any side to side play I could probably flex the blade just because of how thin that edge geometry is but that's not a bad thing with uh, you know a nice slicey blade the knife comes with a very nice uh, leather slip and this one's a little bit softer more supple than the one that came with the sharpshooter but I like them both for different reasons this one you know is a more rugged look and feel you can see, you know, starting to take some patina in the pocket. And this one, I, I, I don't know if this is how you're supposed to do it, but I always go uh, tip up. They fit perfect like that. And this one, you know, I've only been able to carry it for a short period so far because it's still, you know, fairly new to me. But um, this one should take some nice patina and it feels really good in the pocket. It's nice and soft and easily in and out just squeeze those sides pull it out very easily let's get a quick weight first in grams 63.3 grams super lightweight 
2.23 ounces. Yeah, you, you will hardly notice that's in the pocket if you want to have it with the slip. 2.8 ounces, still extremely lightweight. I, I hardly ever even knew it was in the pocket just when I felt it dangling around. That's about it. Quick size comparisons, you have the Benchmade Proper, which is very close in size. The Proper is just a hair longer, and then you have the Victorinox Cadet, of course, is a good bit smaller. Now we have two modern locking knives, the Ontario Rat Model 2, which is a good bit longer, and the Civivi Bow, which is a pretty good size comparison. The bow is just a hair longer, not by much. All right, nitpicks and complaints. I really had to reach on this one, but if I had to be nitpicky about anything, um, and it's, you know, not really an issue, is the thin scales. If you're going to be doing, you know, lots of, you know, more powerful cutting into say the wood or something like that eventually it's going to start to fatigue your arm so you know if if i wanted this to not be a nice slim carry edc then i'd say thicken up the scales a little bit but as it stands i wouldn't want to change it so like i said just a very minor nitpick other than that i love the design i love the fact that he didn't kick up the sway back pattern uh up too high uh, some of them come up a good bit higher. This one is a, a good example of, you know, how high uh, swayback can come up. And that just feels awkward in the hand sometimes. This one, you barely realize that it's a swayback pattern. It's not uh, jabbing you in the palm or anything. So overall, the, the quality, like I said, heirloom quality, something you can pass down to your kids. I, is it expensive? Yes, but this is a premium a premium knife with a great heat treat, uh, well well designed, well engineered, and lots of hand work and hand finishing work went into uh, finishing this knife. So will you get something that is super high quality and uh, is a great performer? I'll, no doubt. These will sell out. So if you want one of these, don't hesitate. I would just go ahead and pull the trigger. Can't wait to see what he does, <clears throat> which one he drops next. And uh, there you go. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute, absolute amazing day. And I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.